Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you here this morning, especially some that we haven't seen for a while. And uh, glad that people are coming back as we open up once more. Uh, glad to, for this area at least, we have the COVID under control. So it's been an answer to prayer, I'm sure. Um, we'll begin our worship service with our choral prelude, Surely the Presence. grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our first hymn is Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus, so I think you should stand up. seated. We are called to examine ourselves and our faithfulness to God's covenant with us. If we say we have no sin, then we are only deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins unto God and one another. Lord, so often we have allowed doubters and skeptics criticize and intimidate us to the point that we do not show the joy we feel 
because you have called us to believe in you and have touched our hearts and lives. Too often we have failed to be your messengers of hope, love, and joy. We've accepted your blessings while ignoring the responsibilities for sharing your love with those around us. Forgive us, Lord. Help us not only experience, but share the wonder and awe of your being members of your beloved family. Help us to bear witness to your love for all of us today and always. Amen. Let us lift up unto God our private and personal prayer requests during this moment of silence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God hears the confessions of our hearts, minds, and lips. Through the life, teachings, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven of all our sins, and by the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to live a new, unending life in Him. We believe the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Shall we stand and affirm our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Lord, open our hearts and minds to the power of your Holy Spirit, so that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you are trying to say to us this day. Amen. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 7, selected verses. Amos said to the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, this is what God has showed me. He was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the middle of my people Israel. Then the king said to Amos, O seer, Flee to the southern land of Judah, earn your bread there, prophesy there, but never again seek to prophesy here at Bethel, for it is my sanctuary. To which Amos responded, I am no prophet, I am not even a prophet's son. I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. The Lord has taken me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Please join me in our responsive reading of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the river. 
Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Who do not lift up their souls to what is false. And, and do, do not, not swear, swear deceitfully. deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord. Vindication from God for their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him. Who seek the face of God. Selah. Selah. Lift up your heads, O gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors. So that the king of glory may come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is the king of glory. Selah. Our second hymn is Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. All Gospel reading this morning comes from the 8th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning with the 27th verse. Jesus and his disciples 
went out to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking, he asked them, Who do people think I am? Some think you're John the Baptist, the disciples replied. Others say you are Elijah or one of the other ancient prophets come back to life again. Then he asked, Who do you think I am? Peter replied, You are the Messiah. May God add his blessing to hearing his holy word this morning. May you understand its truth for us yet this very day. Jesus is walking, and his disciples are following him, and he says, Who do people say that I am? I would ask you, who do you say people think he is? Lord? Okay. Master? Savior? Good teacher with a lot of good wisdom? Son of God? Ooh. Source of hope. Yes? Someone we don't understand fully. Okay. Too many don't care. Yeah. The vast majority don't even know the name, except maybe as a swear word. Yeah. So, in essence, today is no different than back then, because many people have many, many different ideas of who Jesus is. I find the two that the disciples came up with rather interesting. First of all, they said, you are John the Baptist. Now, why they're saying that at that point is John the Baptist has already been beheaded by King Herod. He's dead. So what they're saying is, we think you are John the Baptist come back to life. Well, that's a little hard to do since John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So both of them were alive at the same time already. So even though one of them is now dead, he certainly is not Jesus becoming John the Baptist. He's Jesus. And then the other thing was, they said he was Elijah or one of the other ancient prophets come back from the dead. That he was now going to lead the nation of Israel, of Judah the Jewish people. And that, that's all right. But Dan called me up and said, I don't really understand this thing about Amos that you're asking me to read this morning. And I wrote back to him and I said, well, Amos is saying that he's not a prophet and he's not a prophet's son. In other words, in those days, a prophet was like a pastor, like a priest. It was a, almost an occupation that people had, and it was passed from father to son. And basically what prophets were doing were predicting what's going to happen in the world tomorrow, the next day. That was their job. And Amos is saying, that's not me. I'm a herdsman. I'm a shepherd. I'm a dresser of sycamore trees. I, I take care of the farm kind of thing. But, Jesus, but God said to me, go prophesy to the northern kingdom. <laughs> so he wasn't claiming that he was ordained or anything like that by men. He was saying that he had been told by God to go do this. And so in, any, in, a, in a sense, that's what the disciples are saying, people are saying about Jesus. If he is one of the prophets come back from the dead, he's not part of an organization anymore because they didn't have an occupation called prophecy anymore. That had died about 300 years before Jesus was even thought of. And so he was coming back as an individual to proclaim the word of God. Now the second question that Jesus asked the disciples was the one that is the most difficult because it is, who do you say that Jesus is? And I'm going to open it up to us again. Who do you say Jesus is? Son of God. Okay? Hmm? My Lord, my 
Lord. Son of God, my Lord. Okay. Who else? The source of hope still. Okay. My loving Savior. Yeah, I didn't catch the first word. The way, the way it's salvation, yes. Is that what we say to people? Or is it we still kind of impersonal? Because there's, there's two different sections coming back here. One is saying the Lord is this and over there, and the other one is saying, no, the Lord is in here. The Lord is, I'm part of that. Is that what we're saying to people? Is that what we say to our friends, neighbors, and loved ones? They don't ask. Oh, so they don't, we're waiting for them to ask. If the disciples had waited for people to ask, we would not have a church today. <laughs> Jesus sent them out to proclaim who he is. And that's our job as members of a church. The church isn't for us. That is, it's beneficial to us. But the part that is beneficial to us, we're supposed to take and give it out to other people. The purpose of the church is not to maintain this building as beautiful as it is. And we have people doing that. They're maintaining the building, and they're not showing up for worship. They're not part of the group that gathers to receive the inspiration, the renewal of the strength, the power to go out and do what Jesus asks all of us to do. Tell people who he is according to you. That's going to be different for every one of us. Some of us will say, he saved me from a life of sin. I would say, he saved me from some of the biggest mistakes I made in my life. I should not have been able to be a minister for some of the things I did earlier in my life. But Jesus said, forget it. That's past. I'm with you now. I will lead you out to be what I want you to be. And so I've spent my life being what he called me to be. Now, most of the time, I don't think I'm very good at it. That I see others who I think do a better job. And then somebody will come up to me and say, thank you, Pastor. I really needed that. I'm going, it's all in your hand, Lord. Not me. I'm not the power. I'm not the one who enables this to happen. He is. And it's the same for each and every one of you. If you will trust him, if you will trust him and share with your friends, neighbors, loved ones, what he means to you, they will receive the blessing. Think about that. They will receive what he wants them to receive. And sometimes it's only a little tiny thing but it's like a seed it begins to grow in them and fully change their life. A little seed that grows simply because we were willing to share what we, what we understand the Lord Jesus Christ to be. A source of hope each and every day. A Lord, a Savior one who leads us in all that we do. And sometimes the most important thing he does is show up when we're in the pits, <laughs> when we're, <laughs> the day is just going all to we you know where. And he shows up and said, but you remember this little thing I did for you? Remember this little thing that happened in the middle of the day? Hang on to that. And I will turn your day over to what it should be. Go with his peace. Amen.
Amen. Megan, you lifted us all to about to the balcony level. That was wonderful. That was beautiful. Thank you. What are our concerns for the church this morning? Have anybody that's ill or... Yes. Good, good. We're glad prayers get answered. Yes. Any others? A successful BBS beginning tomorrow. Yes. Yep. It's, it's one of those unusual situations where we really don't know how many are going to be here. And, you know, you're just going to have to go with those who show up because each one of them is worth it. And, of course, we're still praying for Jack and Diane. Uh, he's still having much trouble, and it's not getting better, shall we say. Shall we go before God in prayer? Gracious God, you call us into your presence each and every day. You're available to us all the time, awake, and even sometimes when we're asleep, we sense your presence, leading our thoughts, guiding our dreams. We come into your house, not only to worship you, but to receive your blessing, your sense of direction, where you would have us be and what you would have us do. We receive strength from you. Sometimes that which we don't think we'll be able to overcome or deal with or survive. That you provide the way. You lead and guide us when we take your hand and follow you. You provided us with two very special ways of being in contact. The story of Jesus, your son, and of what he was able to accomplish on our behalf. And then the sense of your Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct us each and every moment of our day. This is through your spirit is how we sense your presence. And so as we come into your presence for prayer, we not only lift up our hearts, but we open them. We lift up our minds and open them as well. We lift up our soul and await your working with us. As we look around our world, close at hand, the things going on in our neighborhoods and communities, the people we deal with daily, we ask for your guidance and provision as you have promised the words we need to say that will be the most help. As we look across this world and all the tensions that are going on, all the uprisings and things where evil is seeking to overcome good, we know that that is not the way you designed the world to be. What you designed was that those who follow Christ and those who follow your earlier way of faith in our Jewish friends and neighbors, you intended that we would have a world that was worth living in if we would just follow you just step by step and day by day. But there are those that we've said don't even know you exist or will not admit their suspicion that you might exist. And they lead us astray. They use weapons, both those of domestic violence and weapons of war. We ask, Lord, that somehow you still guide and direct us into a life that is worth living, so that as we gather with you in our eternal home, 
we might have much to rejoice with and over. All of this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us how to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I see that there are two um, announcements in the bulletin about the flowers and bulletins, and there's a place to sign up outside the church office if you'd like to, and also tomorrow's Vacation Bible School. Uh, Laura, you had something you wanted to say. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, As I had mentioned, you'll be seeing me from time to time with an update about our capital campaign to raise money to have the exterior windows painted. And I have some good news. As of the 11th, which is today? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. As of the 11th, which is today, uh, we have so far raised $3,750. Wow. So that's the equivalent of 125 window panes. So I think that's great. We're just about almost already halfway there. Um, A couple people had asked me how many window panes there are to one window, and it depends which window you look at. And I didn't want to stand out in the rain today, but I think if I remember, one part of the window is 24 panes and another part's 16 panes. So a whole window is about 40 panes if you pick one of the big windows. Um, So anyhow, if you haven't already, we do have envelopes in the back that you can pick up to um, make a donation and you can put in an honor or memory of anybody that you wish. So um, I think we're doing a great job and let's keep up the good work. Thank you. I saw a couple of envelopes in the offering plate this morning, so as of the 11, it's going up. <laughs> Gordon. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that last year, or actually it was this year, uh, during our annual meeting, we talked about having a bylaws committee uh, form so we could think about the future of our church and where we're heading. Um, that committee made up of Donna Hutchinson, Mark Belletier, Kelly Huff and Barbara Krieger, uh, has now had two meetings uh, where we've think, th- started thinking about what are the key parts of the church that we want to build and revitalize and renew. Um, out of the listening sessions, there were three main topics that we came up with. Um, we heard about membership, we heard about family activities, and we heard about having a community church. So those three things have kind of been foundation to us. In, in the way that we're thinking about how the church revitalizes. Um, what we do want, though, through our process of, of thinking about where the church is going, we want your input. So we're going to send out a, a quick survey that's going to ask you to prioritize a couple things for us so we know where your interests lie as we continue to work and, and try to you know, forward the direction of this church for, for the next many, many years to come. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gordon. Our final hymn is number 499, He Leadeth Me. Oh, wow. 
in his peace with his love upon you share his love with all you meet go in his peace amen Be with 